Sunday morning. And Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, that as you come in, that you uh, lead us and guide us, direct our service this morning. Lord, we come to you this morning, God, as we begin to kick off the Bible school season today. Lord, we ask that you, uh, you go ahead and begin to anoint the hearts and minds of the young people and those that will be coming our way. Lord, we ask that you also anoint the, the minds of the teachers and those that have a portion of the, the Bible school this year. Lord, we, uh, we have never had Bible school without there being salvations, and we're coming in high expectation of, of great salvations and changed lives this week. And Lord, we ask right now that you just, just begin, begin to prime, prime the pump, pump, Lord, and get, get us ready, God, God, for the, for the blessings you have in store for us. Lord, I ask you today, um, even earlier than that, to bless today, bless this service, this morning. Lord, we ask for strength for our pastor as he'll challenge us with your word in a minute. And we ask for God anointed voices from our praise team as they sing your praises. And we ask God for blessings on the sound booth and those that allow the, the service to go out in the airwaves and over the social media devices so that others can see us and be blessed by it, Lord. God, I ask you right now, Lord, most importantly, that you be with us and guide us. And Lord, if there are one or many more than one this morning that do not have a relationship with Christ Jesus, that today would be their day of salvation. We trust you today for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you heard in the prayer time, Vacation Bible School beginning tonight. Tonight, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to be having Bible school from 6 to 8 and then from 8 to 8.30 we're going to crank up that water slide and let the kids have a little bit of water slide time every night it looks like so um, remember tonight Vacation Bible School beginning at 6 o'clock p.m. if you have any questions on anything regarding VBS see Miss Barbara Ford, Miss Mary Beth Rogers and they can answer any questions you got but VBS tonight 6 to 8 okay um, also remember all of our other activities this coming Wednesday night midweek service, we will be doing Bible school conclusion in place of our regular Wednesday night service, but we'll all be gathering on Wednesday night. And remember always your Sunday school blessing at 9.30 on Sunday mornings, okay? So Bible school, Bible school, Bible school. Be, uh, be inviting your all of the children, the neighborhood kids. The pastor says borrow and rent children if you need to borrow and rent children. So um, we want to have a wonderful showing, and most importantly, we want to see lives saved and lives changed. So that's what this week is all about. So be coming and supporting and be excited. Let's stand up. We want to recognize some birthdays and anniversaries this week. If you had a birthday or an anniversary this week or one we skipped and forgot about or, or maybe you were out of town, come on up and let us sing to you. Let us recognize you. All of our birthdays, all of our anniversaries. Any birthdays, any anniversaries. We want to sing to you. Any at all before we move into our time of praise and worship. Any at all. Any at all. All righty. We'll move on into our praise and worship time. All righty. We're going to come into worship time then. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you're glad to be in the house of the Lord today because we came to praise the Lord. Didn't we come to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Go ahead.
edge of a new beginning. God, we know you have so much more. We're looking to a new horizon. We're praying for your rain to pour. And overflowing of true redemption. And overflowing of your kingdom. We're ready for a real revival. Oh, Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, fall in this place, fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, come. Just receive it, receive the freedom. Oh, can you feel it? Heaven is reaching. Oh, can you hear it? Our God is speaking. Oh, can you see it? He's got your healing. Oh, just receive it. Receive the freedom, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, fall in this place, fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, come. Oh, Holy Spirit. It's a really exciting time in the life of our church. Is when all the young children come and give their lives. Man, what a change. Whoo! Man. Go ahead, guys. told me things run a little slow today and I believe it I'm running a little slow myself again <laughs>
strength for next week. It's right here in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. <clears throat> never early, never late. He goes down by what he claimed. There's Let me know glad to say. from Jesus. Amen. Come on, this is an old song. You guys know it. Let's sing it. 
Let's sing it like we believe the words of this song. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. I great is our God. Come on and sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God.
us by the millions This is the only world we know And for now this rental's our home If we gon' be a reflection Gotta make this dirt not glow Just so you know Light shines bright everywhere we go Music for the people to illuminate the show Light shines bright everywhere we go Music for the people making it Ice in the city might be more than pretty pretty That freaky shine might be more than easy eye Anytime you see the sparkle in the dark You might look deeper, deeper, deeper. It might be more than simply fear yo, yo, that smile might be joy That's connected to the spirit The spirit might be contagious If you dare, you dare come near it All right, let's give him a good hand. With they shot. All right, let's all stand together. Praise the Lord. All right. We had an opportunity to sing happy birthday every morning. We had someone come in late. Miss Linda, come on down here. You're getting younger. Amen. <clears throat> all righty. A lot of July birthdays. You know what that means, don't you? It was a cold, cold winter. Amen. Let's sing happy birthday, if you will, to Miss Linda. Amen. Many, many more. So as you can see, we're excited about Vacation Bible School. And uh, I hope that everybody can, can come. We'll have the uh, 
actual Bible school from 6 to 8. And then there'll be a water slide available for 30 minutes uh, every evening till about 8.30. I mean, we don't want to stay till midnight. <laughs> so uh, please come. There'll be uh, food and uh, crafts and recreation. And, of course, the most important thing is the Word of God. In uh, Philippians 3, in verse 7, But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain, gain Christ and be found in him, and having not having my own righteousness which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. And that's what we're, we're on a quest for in Vacation Bible School. Uh, the, the ages start from four uh, up to uh, the youth, and uh, we would love to have you. We'll be looking at answers in Genesis, uh, the, the ideas that uh, we're created by God, that uh, there's not a, an evolutionary thought that uh, from the moment that, that God created man in his image, that's the focus of the lessons this week. And there'll be feature things um, at the assembly. We'll look at a couple of different animals that are uh, strictly from Australia and uh, how God created you know, specific animals um, you know, to, to, to be uh, not only pets, not necessarily that we're going to have pets like these up on the stage, but uh, you know, for the, the ecology and for the cycle of life and that man is the most uh, important creation in his image, and we want the kids to know that. So load them up and bring them, and don't forget to bring a bathing suit and a towel. So um, we're on a quest that, uh, again, for the knowledge of Christ Jesus. And then I need to finish that verse, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Give God a good hand clap for his word, will you? Uh, our little skit, we kind of put it together in the last minute. Our, our computer's messed up. All the kids will be participating tonight, and we appreciate all the young folks. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord in giving. Thank you so much for your faithfulness as we give back to the Lord. Be careful what you watch on television. Uh, any preacher who tells you the Bible don't teach giving, uh, he hadn't been called by God and hadn't read the Bible. Uh, we give because we want to see the kingdom of God grow. We want to have a ministry that we can help all people, no matter who you are, and love all people and share the gospel. And it takes uh, everybody participating. And everything all of you do is very important. On everything what you give is not important. It is very important. And we thank God for you. We're glad to have Melissa with us today, all the way from up north. Melissa, good to see you. Let's give a good hand clap for our sister, will you? Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you we can give back to you, Lord. Thank you for providing for this ministry. We thank you, dear God, that, Lord, you open the door and the man's going to shut it. You're going to do it with us who have no strength. God, our confidence and our strength are you, Lord. We ask, God, that you build this church. God, you grow it. Help us to win people. Help us to make ourselves available, God. Help us to be an instrument in your hand that we can all work together. We pray you bless this service. We look forward, God, to the word of God today. Thank you for who you are. Bless each and every one here in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All the children, ladies and gentlemen, come quickly as we worship the Lord together. We have a meal tonight, also spaghetti, so make sure you come. I call on you, God. Give me your ear and hear.
All right. Tony tells me that there's a song that we've been singing that uh, some people have has asked us to sing. And, well, I guess when we do, they're not here. <laughs> but they're here. So we're going to do it right now. Go ahead. <laughs>
all stand together, will you? Amen. Say people going to heaven, some of y'all, before you see the Lord, you're going to have to go to praise and worship class. They ain't got the truth. What to be shame. Praise the Lord. He's the only true and living God. And he is worthy of our praise. The fact that you can breathe, you want to praise him. As I prepared this message this week, I tell you, it's very, very needed. It's a powerful word from all God's word. It's powerful. It's able to save us. It's able to refresh us and remind us of what God has called us to do. We've been talking for weeks now in 2 Corinthians and also 1 Corinthians about ministry. And not only is the pastor called to minister, but anybody who's been saved and washed in the blood of Jesus, God called you and then he commissioned you to go and tell. Amen. It's time to do that. We're going to have to get busy. Last week we talked about our call to separation and consecration. It's one thing to separate, but also we've got to follow through and commit ourselves to God. It begins with an open heart. You can't have a cold heart. You've got to open your heart to the Lord. You've got to love people. It's a call not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. God called you from being in the world. He wants you to separate. It's God's command to come out from among them. It's what God tells us. And the promise God gives us, if we do this, He said, I will be a father unto you. And you should be my sons and be my daughters. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 today, and we're going to look at six verses. First of all, I want to go ahead and read verse 1. I'll go ahead and read the six verses. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. Paul's writing this letter to this church in Corinth. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die and live with you. Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glory and pride in you. I'm filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side, and without were fightings, and within were fears. And then verse 6, Nevertheless, God that comforteth those, he's speaking those of a lowly spirit and humility, that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus. You may be seated May God bless his holy word. Father, we love you. We thank you for this good day. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. I pray, dear God, today that nothing will distract us. And that, God, we would commit ourselves, Lord God, today to hear the entirety of this message. That we not let anything hinder us, Lord. God, we need to hear from you, Lord Jesus. Nobody needs to hear me. We need to hear you, Lord. I pray for that anointing, dear God, that, Lord, you would speak to our hearts. God, that you would, Lord, remind us, God, that, Lord, you have called us with a great and a mighty call. The Bible says it's a high calling of God. Lord, help us, God, today. If we have not yet, God, help us to commit ourselves to you, Lord, 100%. Lord, the end is drawing Ever so nigh, Lord, you're coming back. And, Lord, we must be prepared and ready. I pray, Lord Jesus, today, if there's anybody here today who's not been saved, born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, or watching, I pray, Father God, today, salvation to come to their life. We bless you and praise you because you're God. In Jesus' name, the church said amen. As we begin today in chapter 7, first of all, verse 1 is a reflection. Paul's reminded them of what he said in chapter 6. 
He said, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. God commands us. We see the connection here with last week's message. We got to be able to separate from the world. God calls all who minister to cleanse himself to perfect holiness. We look first of all today, God expects us to cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Now, I can't cleanse you and you can't cleanse me. You've got to make up your mind and know this is what God has commanded us. All sins make a, uh, that people make and do or they make a person dirty. But there are certain sins that especially pollute our flesh. And there are other sins that pollute the spirit of a man. Sins of the flesh would be the sins of immorality and drunkenness. And sins of the spirit would be sins of hatred and jealousy. It's amazing the things that God tells us so clearly in the Word of God. Second Timothy 2 and 21, and Paul is writing to the church. He's speaking to Timothy. If a man therefore purge himself from these things, he should be a vessel in the honor, sanctified and useful and meek for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. What God's telling us today, if we are in the world and of the world and doing worldly things, acting, looking, smelling, being just like the world, God said you have no use. What a sad fact today. God desires to use us. He said that we got to cleanse ourselves from these filthy things of the flesh and of the spirit. Separation is a step that by people that bring about a revival. God expects us to perfect holiness in the fear of God. We ought to reverence God and we are to respect God. We ought to stand in awe of who God is today. Have we forgot who God is? The world today says there is no God. The world today has no respect for God. We need to respect God. Perfecting here means an aggressive word, demanding aggressive action. Meaning not only to practice, but to finish and complete that holiness. Believers are to practice holiness. We are to pursue after holiness. And we are to perfect holiness in this life. However, we know today, listen to me church, only God is holy, only God is perfect. He is God and we're man, but we need to set our heart and our affection to become holy. We need to set our goal that we want to be uh, what God has saved us to be. That we won't want to be looking and smelling and doing and acting like the world. We need to be separated. Hebrews 12 to 14 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see God. We can say that we're saved, but if we're living like the world, you'll never see God. You'll be cast away and placed in the eternal damnation. Ephesians 4.24 says, Put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. we got to pursue God. You get saved and people sit down and we just say we got it made now we're going to heaven. God said that we are to perfect it. We are to seek the Lord with all of our heart. Let's not forget about the Corinthian church. This letter is written by the inspiration of God unto a church that had repented. In the chapter, chapter 1, it tells us about all the things, how God had poured out His Spirit on this church at Corinth, but how they were so sinful. And so many things in the church that didn't please God. But when you come to the second chapter, the second letter, you find that they have repented. And God began to work a great work. After all the suffering that Paul endured from the Christian church and the prayers that were offered up from Paul, God brought much fruit to the church. They repented and God said His Spirit, a revival 
upon the people. You can never be revived except that God revive us. First of all, today we're going to see and we're going to look quickly. The revival had a solid foundation. And our focus today is about a faithful minister. Everybody needs to be faithful to God. Anybody who's saved by God, we all need to be faithful. What that means is that we don't need to faint on God. A person who's fainted is of no use. You out. God wants you to be faithful. It's amazing that God would take a, a little small person, a sick man, a man who said that he was the chief of all sinners, and God has set him today for us as an example that we are to be faithful ministers. Don't let the world or anybody around you cause you to quit ministry. Faithfulness is a must. If there's to be a revival, the Christian church led the way when it comes to having troubles. There was pride in the church. Immorality, fraud, questionable practices were going on from the believers in the church, abusing the Lord's Supper, abusing spiritual gifts, denying even the bodily resurrection of the born-again believer. They denied all these things that were given by the inspiration of God. And the church had within it a large number of members levering every charge imaginable against God's man, the Apostle Paul. It's amazing how people will rise up against you when you begin to minister. I'm not talking about ministering in your own ways, your own methods, but when you minister by the power of God the Holy Spirit. The Bible makes it clear here that they said that Paul was a poor speaker. They said he was a damage to the church's image. They said he was an immoral person living immorally. They said he was stealing from the offerings. If any church that ever was almost seemed to be impossible for God to send a revival, it was the Corinthian church. Yet revival came in the form of God by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And note very importantly, one of the primary reasons that revival came was the faithfulness of the minister, the Apostle Paul. The faithfulness of Paul is for, again, the church today is a great example. As we seek the Lord and we commit ourselves to minister, God unleashes His almighty power. And we can see revival, we can see a great awakening in our country. The Bible says that repentance and revival, that judgment begins at the house of God. If we would get our heart right, make a commitment to God, it's amazing how God would change our land. Right now we're living in a very sick society. Our land is sick. The land is rotten. We need to be people who will commit ourselves to God and stand in a gap and make up the hedge and stand before the Lord that God does not destroy the land. He destroyed Solomon and Gomorrah. He has every right to, to destroy the whole world and even America the way we live in today. Paul noticed, first of all, A, Paul had a great desire for reconciliation. Listen now to those who opposed him. Paul was quick to forgive. Some people live their whole life in bitterness. Some people keep on carrying the sins of unforgiveness that was from their mama and their daddy and their grandmother and somebody else. Would you say amen? There should never be unforgiveness in the life of the believer because you know how sorry we could be, the things that we've done, that God would forgive us, that we would have no problem forgiving anybody else. Come on now. The Bible said if somebody hits you on one side of the cheek, turn it to the other side and give them that side. Paul was quick to forgive. Know how he wrote to secure 
reconciliation. He wrote tenderly, warmly appealed to the opposition. He said in verse 2, receive us. Paul desired to be with the believers. And verse 2, we serve us, receive us. He said, we wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. Notice here quickly, Paul wanted unity among the brethren and reconciliation. He declared he was innocent of the false charges against him. The Bible said in Romans 12, 17, recompense to no man, evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men. It don't matter if a white man offend you, a black man offend you, a Spanish man offend you, or, or whatever offends you, whoever, if they from Mars, if they offend you, God says, you're not to give evil for evil that came against you. I wish the world will read the Word of God. And yet people walk around today with a, a chip on their shoulder and daring you to knock it off about something, and listen now, that God says you should not even have mentioned among you. We're talking about somebody who's been washed in the blood of Jesus. Somebody who God reached down and picked you out of one hellish way of living and saved you and set your feet upon the rock. Paul desired unity. Amen for all the people. He said he wronged no man. He corrupted no man. He had defrauded no man. Let me tell you something. If you're innocent, you're innocent. And if you're guilty, you're guilty. When I was in prison. Everybody said, well, it won't me. was my brother. Looked just like me. I said, I'm going to do my time and go home. If you're guilty, you're guilty. Say amen. B, today, Paul had great love for the church. He's writing this letter now. Paul's not there at Corinth. He's writing a letter. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die and to live with you. Notice here, he loved the church. He did not speak to condemn anyone, even those who falsely accused him. What do we do when people accuse us? I'm just waiting. I'm going to get him. That ain't what Paul did. Paul here loved the believers. Paul said, you are in our hearts. Meaning, I love you so much, I would die with you for you even long to live with you. That's the way that we are to treat one another as born-again believers. That's why 36 years ago, I wasn't going to stay in no church who would not open the door for everybody. And let me tell you something, that evil spirit still lives in this county and other counties all around you where people think they're better than somebody else. You've got to love everybody. You've got to help everybody. You've got to open the door. For, I heard the scripture again this morning coming to church. God said, I'm going to open the door and no man's going to close it. God opens the door. If it's God's house, the door is open. And Jesus don't have to stand outside and knock and try to get in. Even Jesus can come in to the house of God. First John 3, 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loves us not his brethren, he's still dead. He abides in death. People fighting and arguing in churches, fighting and arguing, trying to run the preacher off, fighting one another, looking around with the people who's coming into church, thinking there's no worth in them, they're nobody, they're good for nothing. Jesus must think you're good for something because he died for you. He died that you can have eternal life. John 15, 13, greater love has no man than this. Then a man would lay on his life for his friends. Paul was under heavy attack. He forgot about all that came against him. He, for, he was reminded what God had done for him. He knew that he was the chief of sinners. He knew his full-time job was not other people, but his full-time job was himself. Anytime you walk around and try to inspect somebody else's house, the problem is his own house. Come on, that's amazing how people can say, I can't, I can't believe what happened down there in that family. They can when it knocks on their door. Come on now, church, I'm talking about the truth today. We've all sinned. We've all missed the mark. 
We've all come short to what God desired for us to be today. Somebody help me preach the gospel. Very quickly, see Paul's boldness in proclaiming the truth. Look at verse 4. Great is my boldness and speaks towards you. Great is my glory and my pride of you. I'm filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. Now Paul's writing this to the church. They talked about him. They put him down. They turned their back on him. They left him. They stoned him and left him for dead. And I believe he was dead and God got him up. Let me tell you something. You can be stoned. You can be overwhelmed. You can be just about dead. Let me tell you something. You ain't leaving here till God gets through with you. Come on now. Let's not forget the awful corruption listed about the Corinthians. The terrible accusations that they had against the Apostle Paul. And remember now, he's God's called and anointed apostle. The faithful minister of God must always, con listen, confront error and corruption with a clear and bold proclamation of God's holy word. Somebody say amen. Let me tell you something. It's not my opinion. It's not what I think, what I say. It's what the Word of God says. And let me say something to you. Don't ever flatter yourself the fact that the preacher had picked out a message or a word from God against you. Don't flatter yourself. I ain't got time for you. We got time for the church. Everybody needs to hear the Word of God. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter what you were yesterday. It don't matter how you, how you came to church. It don't matter. Listen, friend, the Word of God is for everybody. I'm not going to stand here and pick out a verse that will wear you out. Friend, let me tell you something. I preach through the Bible, and when we get to it, we're going to deal with it. And if God knocks the breath out of you, you ought to say, God, put some life back in me. That's why we come to church. So God can help us and mold us and make us to be what God wants us to be. Somebody ought to say amen. This is a clear essential here for real revival. Matthew 10, 27 says, Well, I tell you, in the darkness that speak ye in the light that you hear in the ear the preach ye upon the housetop. Let me tell you something. We need to get the message for God's people, not from yourself. We want to hear what you've got to say. We want to hear what God has to say. Come on now. Some people will get in the pulpit and they've been so blessed by God. They'll get in the community and God has blessed them so mightily. They start preaching about their self. They start saying about what I did. They start, they start thinking about and talking about who they are. Let me tell you who you are compared to God. You ain't even a filthy rag. Compared to God. God should always get all the glory if you ever want to talk about you. All we deserve is a hot seat in hell. Amen. The goodness about us is only the goodness that God has given us. It's only because of the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, that lives in you. If you don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, you lost. And you don't belong to God, and you can never do anything to glorify God. All you will ever do is brag on your ability. Let me tell you something. It's amazing what can happen in the life of the believer if you just make yourself available. Second Timothy 2.25, in meekness, instructing those that oppose himself, if God preadventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, the gospel, the Word of God is the power of God that will save somebody. I tell you, I keep on saying, listen now, since we began this direction, this method, this motive of preaching about the minister, I've been saying to you, bring your family. Sit with your family in church while you're alive. Don't wait till you're dead and your family comes to church. Come to church. Bring your family. It don't matter if them youngins want to come or not. You put them in the, in the car and bring them to the house of God so they can feel the moving and the conviction and the love and the power of God the Holy Spirit. You keep on coming if your husband don't come. If your wife don't come, you get up 
and you come to the house of God. Don't let anything keep you from hearing the precious Word of God. I tell you, only the Word of God can make the difference. The Bible says in Acts 5.20, Peter, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Now I want to remind you now, the Word of God is for the people of God. God speaks to us. The reason we come to church today is not because, well, it's Sunday. I think I'll go to church today. You need to come to church so you can get a word from God. We need to come to church so we can hear what God has to say. D, Paul, was confident that the people would respond to the things he had to say. Look in verse 4. Great is my pride in you, my glory of you. I'm filled with comfort. I'm exceedingly joyful in all our tribulations. Joyful means here boasting. Paul was boasting because of the church's repentance. And Paul was experiencing joy, rejoicing, because they repented and revival broke out. You know, we can have revival if we will repent. If we know to do good and don't do it, it's a sin. And let me tell you something, people uh, stand on the television and don't believe in tithing and teach don't tithing. I said that's nothing to do to these people every Sunday who come to church and don't believe in tithing. Thieves. They drive in God's car. They live in God's house and wearing God's clothes and eating God's food. That's a sorry person who claims they're saved. And they come to the point of realizing Everything you got, God gave it to you. A lot of people don't believe in tithing. It ain't nothing new to the church. Paul was glory and he was proud of the people there. Church, he never lost hope that they would repent and be reconciled to God and reconciled to him. They were awful to Paul, but he kept on loving them. Amen. Paul never stopped pursuing them. He knew they were not hopeless. That's why in the beginning we talked about uh, a minister. You've got to have your heart open. See, I know my people here. I know you. I've been around you. I've seen you. And I know you. And i got hope in you. Somebody can talk about you. I ain't want to hear nothing they got to say. Somebody can condemn you. I ain't going to hear nothing they got to say. Because I know you. I got, I'm going to pursue you because God can use you in a mighty way. God desires to use you. He gives you the ability that He could use you. Find you something to do for the kingdom of God besides just coming to church and hearing a good song and a pretty good sermon. Get busy serving the Lord. The Bible says, as Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica, he says in 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 19, For what is our hope of joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and His coming? For you are our glory and our joy. we got to be prepared for the coming of the Lord. You know, we need to take the heart when the Bible Jesus said, I must do the work of the Father who sent me because night is coming when you can do no work. It's amazing today. we got to get the church family back to church and get them busy. Fear is every bit 100% of the devil. Listen to me well now. Don't you speak fear to me. I don't want to hear it. I believe in God, don't you? God is our healer. Paul had confidence. He had hope, belief in the church. He believed the church was going to repent. He, he said they were seeking revival. Listen, revival can only come as the minister perseveres after his people. The preacher shouldn't get her and say, everything's okay, everything's fine. That was an awakening that I had when I moved from playing high school football to college football. When I got there and we lost the ball game, the coach said, well, it's okay, we'll do better next time. I said, are you crazy? Paul Chapman liked to kill us if we lost the ball game. And because he persevered, we didn't lose many. But for somebody to say, it's okay to lose, Maybe next time, very casual and comfort and content about losing. 
Come on, friend. Nobody likes to lose. Can I get a witness? It's amazing how people, listen, revival is for God's people. It's for the church. Revival means to live again. That means get back where you used to be. That means to be refreshed from the Lord Jesus. Seek Him and listen to this statement. Revival is where sin is personified. That means you deal with your own sin. Where everybody, every person deals with their own sin. Everybody in here have sin. We've got sin in our life and we need to get rid of it. Say amen. E, Paul remained faithful despite great tribulation, both he said within and without. Look in verse 5. For when we come into Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without there were fightings and within were fears. Simply stated here, Paul was saying that he, his flesh never had rest from trouble. There was always trouble. Come on now, we want to have what people teach today, this faith movement, that everything's going to be okay, you just like God, you are God. It's always going to be a a bed of roses, it's always going to be easy. That's a lie. When you make up your mind to serve God, you better get ready, and you better be armed and dangerous. Paul, Peter says, Beloved, they cannot strain concerning the fiery trial which is to try you if some strange thing has happened unto you. Paul was troubled on every side. From those both in the church and those outside the church, he was abused, criticized, censored, ridiculed, attacked, persecuted. All these things constantly coming against him. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, when therefore seeing that we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we got God's help, we don't need to faint. We don't need to quit. When you say, yes, preacher, I'm available. Yes, preacher, I'm going to knock on some doors in my community. Yes, preacher, I'm going to have a talk with my spouse. Yes, preacher, I think it's important for us to come to the house of God that we can be reminded who God is and who we are. And the world around us is quickly dying and getting worse and worse and worse and worse. He says in verse 5, without fightings and within fears, Paul concerns, listen now, this is very important, his concerns were not for himself but for the safety of uh, the care of the church of the believers who were often also under heavy attack. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 through 10, we're troubled on every side, yet distressed, we're perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, he said. Verse 10, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Don't think it's strange because you were under attack. They crucified Christ. We want to identify with the Lord Jesus. F, Paul's great sufficiencies in verse 6. I like in the Bible when it says, Nevertheless, nevertheless God that comfort us those of lowly and meek that are cast down, comfort us by the coming of Titus. Now, Titus came to Paul and brought the good news about the church at Corinth. If a minister has ever needed God's presence and comfort, Paul did. He was disliked, belittled, criticized, falsely accused, slandered, weighted down with a a driving sense of duty and mission that God called him, and he fought a good fight. He had to fight every day. When God's servants are under attack, God always meets their needs. Sometimes, dramatically, God will do something. When you're serving him, can I get a witness? Some things he does are natural, and then some things are ordinary. In ordinary ways, God deals with us. I like the scripture that says God is our refuge and strength, our very present help in trouble. The Lord of hosts is with us. 
The God of Jacob is our refuge. Therefore, will not we fear? Don't you fear? Don't live in fear. Don't seek fear. Don't let anybody cause you to have fear as you minister for the Lord Jesus. Titus reported to Paul that the Corinthian church, its believers, repented and that God had sent revival. I couldn't wait to get to the end of this message today. And you say, preacher, that's a short message. Well, I'm not going to chase no rabbits or nothing else. I just want to get the truth out here today. Listen, this is my closing remarks concerning today's message. What God revealed unto me is amazing. As I stood there and watched and looked and meditated and thought about this message today. He said what God spoke to me. Listen very carefully. As we minister, we are not to worry about the enemy. You hear me? When you make up your mind that you're going to minister, don't you worry about the attacks of the enemy. God will handle them in His own sovereignty, His own divine way. You don't have to worry about the enemy. That's not the problem. That wasn't Paul's problem. Paul wasn't writing, talking about how the people of the government come against him. Paul wasn't writing and talking about how unbelievers were coming against him. He was talking about how the church came against him. Don't you worry uh, ever when you make up your mind to serve God and walk with the Lord and walk in the knowledge and the life of the Lord Jesus and you're going to live right. Don't you worry one second about the enemy. God will take care of the enemy. All you've got to do is get busy. Go to work and serve the Lord. As we minister, we're not to worry. As we minister, we must keep the faith. We must stay the course. Paul keeps on saying he was under heavy attack. Even those who claimed to know God came against him. It's amazing now when you win people to Jesus. It's amazing when you preach the gospel how many people won't have anything to do with you. Even some of them who claim to be Christians. I tell you, I have a tendency to want to stick my foot out and trip them. God said, don't you trip them, I'll trip them. Don't you worry about it. I take care of my people. God said, I'll never abandon you. I'm a very present help when you get in trouble. Anybody ever been in trouble before? Raise your hand. Didn't God get you out? When you could not last another day, when you did not have one more breath, God made a way and God got you out. I'm talking about Jehovah God Almighty, the way maker. He got you out. God will get you out. Listen very carefully. We must keep the faith. Stay the course. And here's the things we got to remember today, church. Remain faithful to the call. The church in the last two years, people have quit on God. The excuses that they would never allow to be excused from coming to the house of God. Now they riding it like a high horse. They're looking for every little excuse to say, I can't make it to church today. I got some, something's going on in trouble. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have trouble. But if you've got a, a desire and a passion to seek God, God will get you where you need to be. Remain faithful to the call. Don't faint. Keep yourself clean from the world. You've got to be clean. God is not going to use a filthy vessel. You gotta be clean. The Word of God cleans you. You know that? As the preacher stands here today and opens up the Bible and the Word of God goes forth, it'll cleanse you. It'll let you see you. It'll deal with you. It'll cleanse you. If you succumb to the Word of God, God will make you a clean vessel. But we got to keep ourselves clean. And you know what is you minister? You know what works every time? It's amazing to me. I tell people, friends of mine on the telephone I love dearly, who's been nothing but an encouragement to me, a friend to me, even in hard times when everybody had turned their back on me. There they were. Just like Jesus. There they were. I say, let me tell you something. It sure ain't me. It's God. And the Word of God always works. It's the gospel. 
the Word always works. So as you minister, like Paul said to Timothy, be instant in season and out of season. If they're beating you up, you about to die. Nobody's going with you. Nobody wants to do what you want to do for God. Nobody wants to bring the family to church. Nobody wants to reach out in the community. You just keep on preaching the gospel in season and out of season. This last point, you better listen very carefully. Maintain a love relationship with the church. Don't tell me you love your husband and your wife and you'll never go home. Don't tell me you love Jesus and you can't get to church. You got a problem right there. You got a love problem. Don't tell me you love Jesus and church is not important. See, the devil and the government and these diseases and sicknesses, which God is in control of everything, people have, are using it now as an excuse not to be in the house of God. Let me tell you something, friend. You've got to do everything you can to maintain the right relationship with the brethren. Paul was writing to the church. He didn't send it to the government. He didn't send it to Caesar. He didn't send it to other people. He sent the letter to the church. His relationship with the church was what was most important. Look at me, friends. Stand up on your feet for just a moment. Let me remind you how important it is today for you to have a relationship with the church. I think it's a sad situation when a born-again believer has to go to the funeral home to have a church service. You grew up in the church. You got saved in the church. They're to send you a well going home from the church. Say amen. I tell you, you ought to get married in the church. You ought to get baptized in the church. You ought to die in the church so you can live in the church. Let me tell you something, friend. So many people today have allowed the devil to get them out of relationship with the church. And you come to church when you want to. When it's convenient. When it's a good time. It's not a priority. Now, friend... If that's not bothering you, that's fine. But if it is, you ought to repent today. And God can revive you. It needs to be a priority. God needs to be a priority in your life. Church, where the Word of God is shared and spoke, and you can find love, and people can love you and care for you. I don't care who comes through that door. I don't matter who they are. We're going to love them because we got the Word of God that can save their life and promise them eternal life forever and ever. Don't let anything break your relationship with the church and your church family. Don't let anything break it. It should be priority. Did y'all hear me? Don't you let anybody get in your ear, talk about sister so-and-so on the other side and brother Billy Bob on the other side. Don't you let anything separate you from your relationship with the church. I'm going to close with this word. The Bible said in 1 John 3, 14, i got another word. We know that we have passed from death into life. I've already read that because we love the brethren. If you don't love the church and the brethren, you ain't saved. He that loveth not his brother remains unsaved. Whatsoever or whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. You know, a murderer can be saved. The Bible tells us we all a bunch of murderers. We have a missile in our mouth. Some folks can sit in the den and lick a skillet with a tongue in the kitchen. Long-tongued devils. Hereby proceed with the love of God because He laid down His life for us. Paul, John, listen, John said we ought to lay down our life for the brother. And let me remind you of all the trouble the Apostle Paul endured. But as he wrote that letter, it was a letter of love. He loved them. Because he knew they had within them the potential to repent and see revival. As you stand here today, you may accept your cross as a young person. But your love for the church has dwindled. There may have been a time that you couldn't get enough of the Word of God. 
and the things of God, the church that Jesus is coming back for, he's not coming back for all these secular organizations that want to claim Jesus being a part of it. Jesus died, it says in the scripture, for the church. He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Come on now. And that's only because of the love of Jesus Christ. Well, preacher, why in the world should we have a, a solid relationship with the church? God says that we should be planted in the church. You ought to plant yourself in the church. Listen to the scripture. I'm going to close. The Bible says in Psalm 92, verse 13, listen now, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bring forth fruit in the old age. You know what God says there? You ought to get in church as a child and stay in the church. Get in church as a child. Bring your children to church. They need to understand the Word of God. They need to be saved. They need to say, Papa, I love you, but I love Jesus first. Mama, I love you, but I love Jesus first. Brother, I love you, but I love Jesus first. Sister, I love you, but I love Jesus first. You shall bring forth fruit in the old age that you shall be fat and flourishing. Would you say amen? God's people... Don't even wear a belt. They're so fat and blessed by the Lord. There's not a worldly belt that can hold you up. Because God has blessed you so greatly. Anybody being blessed by the Lord? Why don't you plant yourself in the Lord's house? What a sad thing for a pastor to come back to church on Wednesday night. And you ain't even thought about coming. You know what? If the Lord hadn't called me, I'd have quit on you a long time ago. I'd have given up on you a long time ago. But you know what? It's not my choosing. This flesh say, preacher, won't you just quit? Well, you can't quit. What else can you do? God saved you. You know what? You've got to know where you came from. You've got to know who you need. Plant yourself in the house of God. Bow your head with me, please. We're going to sing a song of invitation. If you're not saved today, will you come today and plant yourself in God's house? You may be saved today. You may be running from God. Come on back home and just plant yourself in the house of God. Won't you come on back today and commit yourself to what Jesus died for? People say, well, preacher, you just want people to come to church. And I want God to be in the church and God's people ought to be in the church. I love people. People tell me they saved. They got all these excuses. Let me tell you something. If you're not careful, God could give you a real excuse. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Somebody say amen. We're going to sing a song of invitation. But first of all, you ought to give God the largest hand clap of praise that you ever gave Him. Come on now. Give God a good hand clap of praise. Come on now, if you're not saved, come on down here and give your life to the Lord. If you have not committed yourself to the church and the people of God, won't you come as we have this song of invitation. You just come on and come quickly. I'm
just a moment, please. Bow your head for just a moment. Mary and Martha thought he was gone. Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. You may have come into this sanctuary this morning dead and trespasses and sins. Jesus says, come on. Come unto me, all you who are laboring and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. While we have our heads bowed and our eyes closed for just a moment, you know, there's things that you have to do. I thought about it. Jesus walked up and down the Via Della Rosa suffering. All hell against him. Bones, his ribs and back was sticking out where he was beaten so bad. And every step he took, he thought about you. He thought about you right now. Whoever you are, he thought about you. And what you're feeling right now around your heart is the love of God. And he's knocking. If you will open the door, he would come in and sup with you and you with him. Would you raise your hand today, heads bow, eyes closed. Preacher, I'm not saved. I need Jesus in my life. I need the Lord to come into my life and save me. I want to leave here a new person. I want to be a new person when I walk out that door. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? If God is dealing with you, please, don't let the sun go down today. Make it right with the Lord. He loves you. We love you. Christians, don't you allow anything to separate you from the church. Father, we bless you. We praise you. Thank you for your presence. God, we pray your blessings on the Bible school this week. We bless you, Father, for what you're going to do. We thank you for who you are. It's really good to be in the house of God. In Jesus' name, in the church today, amen. Make sure you speak to somebody before they leave. Particularly if it's a visitor, please speak to everyone before you leave today. God bless you. Six o'clock tonight, we'll have supper here and vacation Bible school. God bless you.